Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. And for my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back and supporting me. I really do appreciate you guys. So what I wanted to do today is kind of get back to the um, road to rank one mythic uh, climb, which I haven't had a chance to kind of do for a little while here. And there's uh, kind of a new deck that I wanted to look at. Um, first of all, I do want to give a shout out to my very first member on the channel. Um, so Kibo, again, thank you so much for uh, taking that jump and getting early access to all of my videos, as well as getting shout outs in my videos. So thank you so much for your support. It really does mean the world to me. If you would like to have early access to my videos and get shout outs, I get a shout out here at the beginning of my of my videos. Um, here is how you can join as a member and uh, the steps that you need to take. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the uh, also right under the banner here for the video so these are both great ways to support the channel I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you so thank you guys so much again for your consideration all right let's get into some games okay so let's go ahead and jump in <clears throat> um, I wanted to look at mono red aggro but then I kind of wanted to see you know, what is the best way that we can really break Slickshot show off? And like, what's the best possible home um, to kill the opponent as quickly as possible? And so it kind of made me think back to the Jund aggro deck. Um, Jund is kind of a very loose term since it's basically a mono red deck that just, you know, piles everything onto Picnic Ruiner and gets in for the win. Now, since we have Slickshot show off, I think that this can make this deck a lot more consistent. And so what I ended up doing is looking at the sort of old shell of the Picnic Ruiner deck and then adding in Slickshot Show Off, looking at some new cards and basically just kind of removing all of the removal and then looking at um, how much we can do with um, Demonic Ruckus, which has just been amazing. Um, as well as Slickshot Show Off. So for the deck here, we have, I think, 16 different pump spells. Uh, we have four copies of Ancestral Anger, which can help replace itself by drawing a card, giving Trample and getting plus X plus zero, um, where X is one plus the number of cards named Ancestral Ang Anger in your graveyard. So this kind of ramps up if you can get more copies of it. And then you've got four copies of Felonious Rage, which gives plus two plus zero in haste. And then when that creature dies this turn, you create a two, two white and blue detective creature token. So it kind of replaces itself a little bit. Also, the haste is important because this haste um, is very useful if you give it to the Picnic Ruiner, which does not have haste. And then you've got four copies of Monstrous Rage, which is just absolutely amazing, plus two plus zero um, and then creates a monster roll token, which gives it plus one, plus one, and trample. So basically plus three, plus one, and trample. And then you have four copies of Demonic Ruckus, which you can plot on turn one. And then this will give the creature plus one, plus one, menace, and trample. And then when Demonic Ruckus is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card. So another way to kind of replace itself. Um, between all of that, and then also Kumano faces Kakazan, we essentially have... 20 ways of buffing up other creatures and so the plan is pretty much either to play like cacophony scamp and then buff it up attack and then sack it to do um, essentially double the damage um, or to attack and then use callous cell sword which has a um, adventure spell here of burn together where you can pay one red to sacrifice or you have a creature deal its damage um, equal to its power to any other target, then sacrifice it. And so that works really well with Cacophony Scamp because basically you attack and you hit them. And then after combat, you choose not to sack and then you use Callous Cell Sword to have it 
do its damage to the target, and then it dies, and then it does its damage again to the target. So if you have like a four power cacophony scamp, you hit them for four, you don't sacrifice it with the ability, and then you use the cell sword, and then you hit them for another four, and then another four. So 12 damage off of a two card combo. Um, well, three card combo if you have like monstrous rage to pump it up. So, or some other way to pump it. So you've got that combo, and then you have Picnic Ruiner, which is a 2-2, and when it attacks, if you have a creature that's power 4 or greater, this will gain double strike until end of turn. So with all the pump that we have going on, giving this double strike is another way to do a ton of damage. We have one copy of Twin Inferno, which can either copy a another instant or sorcery, and you can choose new targets for it, or it can give a creature double strike. And this is really good with Slick Shot Show Off, which will get plus two plus zero until end of turn for every non-creature spell that you cast. And since you can plot Slick Shot Show Off, you can set up like Demonic Ruckus plot on one, Slick Shot Show Off plot on two, and then turn three, play the Show Off, play the Ruckus, play three other spells, and do just an absurd amount of damage. You can do anywhere from like 15 up to 18 damage just off of that. Um, or if you have Twin Inferno, you can do, yeah, just an absurd amount of damage. Then you've got Monastery Swift Spear, which has Haste and Prowess, benefits from all the spells. Um, and I only had room for one copy of Fugitive Codebreaker. I think that this is certainly a great card in the deck. It's just a matter of there's just not quite enough room. So with the, the creature count, we've got 21 creatures. This is not counting the Kumano faces Kakazan, so really it's closer to 25. And then non-creature spells, you've got 21, but that's again kind of closer to 25 because Callous Cell Sword is also a spell. So you're trying to sort of maximize as much creatures and also spells as possible just to make it function really well. And then for the, the land, you've got um, really low land count. We're running 18 sources just because we want to have as many spells as possible, highest density, and just have this go off super fast. We have seven mountains, one Sokens in. The only reason we're running one is because, you know, realistically, you're not going to get above two or three mana. That's the plan, at least. Four copies of Black Cleave Cliffs which uh, comes in untapped if you have two or fewer other lands, and four copies of Copper Line Gorge. The reason for this is because you can then play Callous Cell Sword after you use the Adventure spell. And the Cell Sword is a 2-2 that comes in with a plus one, plus one counter for each creature that died um, under your control this turn. So after you know using it to sacrifice a creature, then you can have it come in as a 3-3, for example. Um, so you... And then we've also got two Sulphurous Springs, so two Pain Lands to help kind of cast the Cellus, the Callus Cell Sword, and then four copies of Copper Line Gorge, just in case we need to cast the adventure version of Picnic Ruiner, um, because it's a pretty small price to pay. Um, again, we're, we're really not going to have more than three mana in play at any given time, at least I don't expect to, and so kind of no downside to have access to this, um, where in a pinch, we can use this to give counters to another creature and hopefully swing for the win. So yeah, the deck is pretty straightforward. Basically put everything on, you know, either your, your Scamp or your Picnic Ruiner or a Swift Spear or whatever and just get in there and bash face. There is a little bit of, um, I guess, you, you know, it, you have the ability now to kind of deal with counterplay a little bit because you can plot cards if they have like counter magic up and you can read into it. So you can like set up for a really big turn. But yeah, I've been pretty excited about this deck. It's a very different spin than just like the traditional mono red. And I wanted to see if I could use this to climb ladder a bit. Um, it has been a couple days since we've played on ladder, but I'm around, yeah, I guess around like early, low 600s. So hoping to make a nice push. All right, let's jump into some games. I've really loved doing the standard events, and I've got a couple more requests for a couple different decks, so I'm looking at maybe putting together like a new list for Boros Humans, um, also maybe a new list for 
um, Orzov life gain potentially coming up in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. Um, also, if you wanted to check out my playlists, they're in the description as well as the deck lists. And there's playlists for all my limited stuff, my collab drafts, and my constructed, um, both the sort of the rise to mythic as well as the standard events. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep. It's a little bit suspect, but I think hoping for two land with 18 land is not always possible. And we can certainly use this to get there, I think. So I'm going to start with Kumano faces Kakazan. Hopefully we do draw a second land. But our plan here is just to play Cacophony Scamp. Okay, Thalia is a complete beating. Wow. I have not run into mono white humans yet with this deck, so. Yeah, we pretty much need the Thalia to have any chance of winning. Wow, they've got the full combo. Good lord. This could be a very, very quick game. Yep, they're definitely going off. Okay, not drawing into land is pretty rough. We're facing down... Five, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen. Good God. I think they can do seventeen with Mishra's Foundry. Okay, this is super over. Yeah. Yeah, the Thalia Lockdown is pretty powerful against this deck. Also, it was kind of a sketchy keep there, so there is that. I'm still kind of figuring out the land. Um, I think you do want a very low land count, but maybe 18 is a little bit too low. Still, I think that there's certainly like one, you know, one landers that you can keep where you can kind of like draw out of it a little bit. That maybe wasn't one of them. So maybe that was a bit greedy. Okay, this is a lot better. We've got a nice turn one. And I guess it's a question of, do we want to go for Ruckus here, or Kumano faces Kakazan? I think I... Hmm, it's actually an interesting question. I guess Kumano faces Kakazan sets up code, or, uh, Picnic Runer decently well. There's just so many different options you can go with here. Plotting this for one is also great, so yeah. I think I'm gonna do Kumano here. All right, we're up against the World Soul deck. So we don't have a whole lot of time. They don't have a lot of interaction though, so I think we can just set up Picnic Ruiner. And since we don't have a lot of spells in our hand, I think Picnic Ruiner is going to be better here than Slick Shot Show Off. I did this, I did build this deck today, so it's still very much a work in progress. <laughs> but, um, 
Seems like it could be fun. Okay, so now... I guess we've got to go Ruckus here to get this to have double strike. And I'm still trying to figure out like how many creatures versus how many spells you want to have. This is a pretty, obviously, very heavy creature hand, but yeah. The Callus Cell Sword is really nice because it doubles as a spell, and um, same with the uh, Kumano. Unfortunately, we have no interaction for Nissa here, so they're going to get. Probably the um, the and the research analyst, and then be able to kind of go off here. Yeah, Nissa is pretty broken. I think there's a maybe an alternate build of this deck where it has a lot more interaction and kind of goes more off the slick shot show off. So I don't know which is better. Still kind of trying it out, but um, I think this deck has potential. Oh well, looks like they hit the Aftermath Analyst here, so we pretty much have to kill them next turn, and I don't think that's happening. I guess there's a small chance here we can go Ancestral Anger and just see what we draw into. Question is how much do they respect it? Oh god, I thought they were gonna block. Wait, wait. Oh, this is a sorcery. Oh Jesus. Oh Lord, I'm still learning this deck. Oh my god, I think we're just dead. Um, wow, I thought ancestral anger was an instant. Okay, well, what do we do? Um, I guess we go slick shot show off here. We might not get another turn, unfortunately. Whew, mistakes were made. <laughs> yeah, they're going to gain a ton of life here. And they can go through their graveyard, I think, a couple times because of the uh, Aftermath Analyst. They've got another one coming. What else does Titania do? Gotcha, okay. This is probably game.
Okay, yeah, this is just... I don't, I don't think we can kill them here. Because they're going to gain, like, another 10 life or some absurd amount here, right? Yeah, this is just out of hand. Whew, okay. This is not nearly as tested as my other decks, but it did seem fun. I think it probably has just like a lot of tuning to figure out. Okay, now we have a land that has no creatures, except for Kumano faces Kakazan, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem. Okay, I guess we can play this as like the Caustic Sellsword. I don't really want to, but I think we sort of have to at this point. I guess we could just like set up Ruckus for Kumano. Hmm. Otherwise this comes in as a 3-3, three, three, which isn't bad. I guess is a little bit of a better use of our mana. Certainly not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but we don't have any other creatures right now, so. Okay, so let's put Ruckus on, I guess, the Cell Sword. Also, this is a sorcery. <laughs> um, hmm. I guess we use Ancestral Anger on Kumano because we want to push that through also. Okay, that was a nice pickup. Now we can do Swift Spear plus Felonious Rage and just see what they block. I have to get a little bit scrappy here. <laughs> now we're just drawing nothing but land. There's only 18 land in the entire deck, so. Okay, where do we want to put this? Um. We put on the Cell Sword, but then we're missing some damage here. I think we want Kumano maybe out of combat in case they have something like um, Lunar Veteran. So I guess we put it on the token. Suppose if they push with Kumano and they block here, they don't really have good blocks for Cell Sword. Yeah, maybe we just full send here.
Okay, that's a nice one. So the question is, do we just sack it? I guess if we attack, we just trade with like Novice Inspector, which isn't great. So I think we just go ahead and sack it to throw it at face, and then we'll draw a card and see what we've got. Okay, we can't quite get there, but I guess we can set up. Now they can't use their battlefield forage, well for colored mana. Okay, I think that does it. Now we have exactly four attackers. So yeah, that'll do it. Whew, squeak that one out. That was not how this deck is normally supposed to operate, but I mean, we got scrappy, we got there. So that was fun. What ideally you want is like a good mix of creatures and spells. Uh, okay, this hand looks great. We have at least one normal creature. Also what's interesting is with like Slickshot, it kind of changes like when you want to play Kumano faces Kakazan, if you have it in hand, potentially. So this is really nice. Unless they have like Witch Doctor Frenzy or like, I guess, double removal, we can set up a Swift Spear to have four power. I think they have the same plan as us. Ooh, there's the show off. Okay, so now we could do a show off here. The problem is show off will only have three toughness. So I think we just go Swift Spear plus Kumano and then set up for a bunch of nonsense next turn. Oh, you know what? Actually, I wonder if we should have Monstrous Raged there. This is okay, though. If they want to take a turn off to kill our Swift Spear like with like a Lightning Strike, totally fine with that. Okay, they've got the show off, so they're a turn ahead of us here. But they don't have many spells, at least. Um, so now if we go like double monstrous rage, what are we hitting for? Could also go like swift spear plus single monstrous rage. This would be three, six, eight, 10, 12. So not quite lethal. We won't be able to block easily here, unfortunately. They're going to be hitting us for at least two, four, five, seven, plus whatever they draw. Hmm. Okay. 
we could set up the double block and try to do it over two turns. That's the other option. Yeah, because here we're pushing 11. Or we could just try to block like Swift Spear. Actually, never mind. They'll have Ruckus for Swift Spear. Yeah, I think we just push and just hope it works out. It all depends on like what's in their hand right here. Ooh, that was a good draw. Yeah, so we were dead even if we had blockers, we were still dead. Being on the play is pretty good. <laughs> The one thing I will say is that this deck does not have interaction, which is a major downfall. Um, but the hope and the plan is that we're a little bit faster because of it, so I'm not sure. I think that you could also probably build this more, you know, with like a bunch of shocks, a bunch of um, play with fires, lightning strikes, kind of go that direction. And I might explore that also. It might be a little bit more consistent. This is a good hand, though. We finally have our show off with like a decent curved open to it. And I think here, because we're doing show off, we might want to set up Ruckus first instead of Kumano faces Kakazan. Okay, well, <laughs> there's the Picnic Ruiner. So now we've got to decide. Um, we could do... We have, like, Ruiner on two. This is also a turn that they're not going to want to use removal since they've got their counter for Kumano faces Kakazan. But they kind of have to kill Picnic Ruiner, right? I suppose we could make it an, a 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. I think maybe we just set up Show Off. Can they do 17 to us next turn? It's possible. I think we gotta go for it. We got an open window here. Let's see if we hit land. Nice. We can do 10, but not 17. Unfortunately, we also cannot do five. <laughs> oh my God, what a beating. Uh, if we had a copper line gorge here, we could do the counters and get there. So I think we have to might. Sweet, they just <laughs> conceded. <laughs> Oh, that's great. If you play slow enough, I'll just uh, concede into you. That's so funny. Because we definitely didn't have it.
All right, opening hand looks great. And here I think we can set up Ruckus. Nice turn one play. All right, let's see if we can get Picnic Ruiner going. I think there's definitely more upside here. We've got to be a little bit careful because they are going to have um, potential removal here. So no more cut down. They could have March though. I think we just go for it. Got their turn three win, finally. <laughs> oh, feels good. Okay, so I think that overall the deck needs some work. Um, it is definitely a lot of fun, but uh, let's take a look at the stats. Yeah, so currently it's 50%, three and three. So I think there, you know, definitely needs to be some cleaning up of the uh, the main deck. And I'm not entirely sure how you'd go about doing it right now. I think maybe maybe a couple fewer creatures. Um, the other, I guess the other option you could look at is just trying to go more of like a spell route for like direct damage using like play with fire, lightning strike, shock, um, yeah, so that way you've got like another way to, to finish. Like if they if they kill your creature, you don't just lose the game. So at any rate, thanks guys for watching. This is something I wanted to sort of try out and I think it could be a fun deck. So we will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.